Um, so the family makes so many sacrifices for you as a kid, and the brothers do all the Davis Cup stuff. What was that afternoon like for Peter and Erica's wedding? Yeah, it was a uh, very emotional day. <laughs> very emotional day. First of the Fossil brothers taking that, you know, next that huge step uh, in life, and uh, it was it was amazing. I mean, the wedding was perfect. Uh, my parents' uh, property and uh, amazing people around, and and uh, I was very proud of my brother. Uh, you know, he's uh, he's he's the rock of our of our family. He's he's uh, an amazing guy. So it was a very proud moment for sure. The Pospisil Army, they call her Vashik's Army, so this was, this was his chance to... Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, Vashik, how would you evaluate your year to date? You look at the ranking at 72, you had the big run there in South Korea. What, where, how would you kind of evaluate where you're, the win over Andy? Uh, yeah, it's been, it's been a solid year. Uh, I'm, I'm playing well again, I'm, I'm motivated. I'm, I'm, I've really put a lot of focus on getting fitter um, and lighter on the court, which, which, which I've done. And, and I think I'm as fit as I've, as I've ever been and, and uh, playing really well. I mean, I've had solid results. I've had some tough draws also lately. And, and just when I'm you know, picking up some momentum to have a, a breakthrough, you know, I've, you know, guys that I'm going to ha have to beat, but they're still tough draws nonetheless. And, and, uh, but yeah, I feel like everything is really kind of coming together and I'm pretty confident about, about my game. I'm still, um, you know, my coaching situation is still not a stable one. So I'm sure that once, uh, that gets sorted, uh, you know, there'll, there'll be even more room to, to kind of uh, go forward. But, but I feel like uh, even so, my process is pretty set in stone right now. I'm not, not uh, putting, you know, too much pressure on myself. And, uh, but at the same time, I'm, I'm uh, you know, really, really pushing forward and, and hoping to do well uh, this year and keep going up the rankings. So there are a lot of layers to that answer. Let's start with the last part. You said, I'm not putting too much pressure on myself. Had you found that you were doing that? Um, yeah, well, throughout my career, you know, you're always, uh, I feel like I'm always trying to find a balance of, of just putting the right amount of pressure on myself and, and uh, you know, not overdoing it because it's, it's healthy, because it's, it's, that's what, you know, drives you, motivates you to do better. But at the same time, um, you know, I'm a perfectionist and I really feel like I can do uh, a lot more in this sport and I have, uh, you know, the potential to, to, to be higher in the rankings. and. So, you know, sometimes I can put a little bit of extra pressure on myself. But right now, I've, I've just, uh, over the years, also just really learned to, to kind of put, put that kind of, uh, you know, thinking to the side and, and just focus on day-to-day, -day, you know, getting better. Um, that's, that's really the only thing you can control anyways. And um, so it's, it's been, um, yeah, it's been a very positive year in that sense. I feel like I'm, I'm, it's just shown that my level is, is, is good and it's high, it's up there, but I'm, but I'm still waiting, I think, for that, uh, you know, to have uh, another little breakthrough. And, and I feel like that's uh, around the corner, whether it's, you know, this week or next month or in a few months or who knows when. But, but I definitely feel like my level is, is picking up and I'm playing uh, better and better. What, what, what areas do you find that you've seen that improvement that, okay, I could be poised for a breakthrough? Uh, I think physically. Uh, I'm feeling better. I think that's something that's hampered me a little bit over the years. I've lost a lot of matches uh, uh, for physical reasons, be it injuries or, or uh, just you know from the fitness standpoint alone. Um, I've, I've changed my diet. I've I've um, I'm working extremely hard even throughout the year, not just you know off season. Build. I'm I'm kind of maintaining a good uh, a good base that that I'm. So I've just been working very hard, and I think you know when you work hard, you you get rewarded. Um, just you know. Uh, what you put in, you, you get back. So I think I've, I've really been putting a, lo a lot of hard work in, so I'm, I'm uh, just being patient and waiting for, for the, the rewards to come in. And I know they will because I'm optimistic and, and like I said, my level is there. So what's the story on the coaching situation? Where do you, how do you envision this kind of unfolding? Yes, well, I'm, I'm exploring a few options. Right now I'm working uh, part-time with my two old coaches, Fred Fontang and, and Fred Niemeyer. Niemeyer. They've been helping me. Uh, over the last uh, two months um, and uh, yeah I'm just going to explore some options uh, throughout this year uh, wait to see you know what might become available for, for 2018, 2018 uh, since we are in the middle of the season so there's not too much activity in the you know, coaching and player relationship world so um, I'm just going to kind of look at all the options explore a little bit and then the idea is not to jump into any decisions uh, 
too quickly uh, and just kind of organize myself for 2018. So 2017, I'll 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 go solo and I'll go part time coaching and and uh, I feel like I know enough about about my game and and the sport to to be able to to uh, have good results. Uh, you know, even on my own, but uh, of course, uh, having a good coach is, uh, is an important part of the, of the success on the tour, so I'm hoping to have that figured out soon. So you know yourself well, you know your game well, and you come to Montreal to face a guy that you know well, yeah. that you've <laughs> hit with before the, uh, and the rest of it. Isn't that wild that you come to the Canadian Open, the Canadian Tour Stop, and it's your Canadian Davis Cup teammate that you're going to be facing against? Yeah, it's it's uh, it's pretty funny. I mean, this kind of stuff happens all the time. You know, it, you, you see it. Uh, I've um, I don't know if I've played a Canadian at Rogers Cup before. I, maybe I have. I'm not sure. But I don't think you have. But uh, no. Uh, but you know, I've, I've uh, yeah. He's he's a tough player. You know, he's number three in Canada, and and um, yeah, we're gonna have to play well to win that for sure. And but I'm feeling pretty confident. I've I've been playing well uh, these last few months. I've been training hard and. And I know it's it'll come down to, I think you know how how I perform, how I play. I feel like I have the weapons, and and if I you know play play a good match, uh, you know hopefully things go my way. But I know it'll be a tough one, and and uh, it always is when you step on the tennis court. You know it doesn't matter who who you play and what the rankings are. It's always a always a tough match. Uh, that's just professional sport, you know. So it's uh, anything can happen in, on on any given day, and and uh, I'll be ready for for anything, and I'll be. Um, using my weapons. You know Peter well. Tell, tell us a fun story about Peter. A fun story about Peter? Ah, <laughs> oh, geez. Because um, he's a character now. Yeah, well, yeah, he's, yeah, he's becoming a little bit of a Twitter troll, isn't he? <laughs> no, I, I'm just kidding. But uh, you know what? A fun story about Peter. I, I got to say, uh, you know, he hasn't been on the Davis Cup team for the last uh, few years, so we haven't really... I haven't really seen him very much, to be honest, the last um, four or five years. I mean, before that, we, we were to get a little bit more, but but I'll, I'll try to think. Yeah, actually, when, um, this is a pretty, f I don't know if this is a funny story, actually. This maybe is not, not appropriate, but um, yeah, it's better not to air this. All right. <laughs> Um, Better not to air this. What, what kind of relationship? The story, the story was, uh, but I just remembered it was not in good taste because he, because when he had that incident out out the window, oh right, right yeah. Right. But the story was I roomed with him when he came back from his injury, okay. and they put me in the room uh, with him. I guess just to have to have like a roommate, sure. And uh, and he fell asleep, and then and he was and he started sleep talking, and he but he like went up. He he like did it. He did. I think he fell asleep before me, and I guess I thought he was still maybe awake, but he. He did like a sit up and he went up in his bed like this. He's like, what was that? What was that? And I was like, what was what? And then I woke him up when I started talking back to him. He's like, what? He's like, what are you saying? What? And like, it was like super, I was like super freaked out. <laughs> I was like, I was like, holy shit. I was like, <laughs> That's fantastic. That was kind of scary, but um, anyways. Listen, you play with the opportunity to not only win a first match, but then to get Federer again, just like you had him here, whatever it was, four, six years ago. I mean, what, what kind of opportunity is that, if you win, we dare this right before the match, to get a chance mm -hmm. at Roger? Yeah, I'd love to get a chance, another chance at Roger, actually. I, I've played him three times, uh, three times, I believe. Uh, you know, came close to, to beating him one time, was two points away, and, and he's always you know, been an idol of mine, and so any time I can step on the same court as, as him it's a pretty surreal uh, experience and uh, yeah it's, it would be you know a, a great opportunity to do that again and I mean right now he's playing some of the best tennis of his career which is amazing at 35 and so uh, um, but uh, yeah that's, it's the ultimate stage in tennis you know to play against the histories uh, the sports greatest player so hopefully uh, yeah it would be it would be nice you know six years uh, later to to do it again to play him he, play him here but um, yeah, there's opportunities every week, you know. So it's it's, uh, but this would be different. This would be special playing Roger in Montreal. So uh, yeah, I'll keep my head down, try to get through the first one, and then and then uh, set my sights on that if I get the chance. When we spoke in March on camera, you called 2016 somewhat of a crisis and the motivation that you'd questioned. Where are you with all of that now, Bachik? I'm. Uh, 
Yeah, that's that's in the past. I mean, it was it was a, a tough year, a lot of off court issues that I had, and and on court just uh, all together it was all coming down all at once, and uh, and uh, yeah, it was just really just doubting a lot of things in in general and what I wanted to do, and and but that was uh, yeah, and that's gone. I'm 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 very healthy physically, mentally, and I'm I'm very motivated. Uh, so I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm feeling as good as ever. I just, just, uh, you know, the only part right now that, that I need to sorting out is uh, a lot of movement in my coaching, uh, coaching box, coaching scenario, which, which, um, you know, takes away a little bit of energy and a little bit of focus as well, because, uh, um, you know, trying to sort out issues with the teams and is, uh, yeah, it takes away a little bit of focus on what you need to do. So I think also once that, that all, all, you know, kind of, uh, settles down and, and, uh, things get sorted there, I think I'll have, you know, even more uh, opportunities to, to kind of push my way back up the rankings. Sure. The win over Andy, what, what did that, what was that night like? What did that mean to you, man? Yeah, that was, yeah, the win over Andy was a huge one. I think, uh, you know, a huge one for the confidence. Uh, not so not so much just the acute moment and the confidence that at that time, um, but just knowing that you know you can go out there and be the number one player in the world every time you step out, you know you're not playing number one player in the world every day. So if you're playing somebody that's top ten, suddenly, you know, uh, it just gives quite a bit of confidence. And it was a great, uh, a great night. I played great tennis and and tennis that I that I know I'm capable of playing. Of, and it's just about uh, doing that on a regular basis, getting more consistent. And I know I have the shots and I know I have the weapons to to beat beat these guys and. And uh, that's where I feel like I, I still have um, some room to improve. Is just getting more consistent and getting that, um, yeah, just day in and day out, bringing that kind of level and performance onto the tennis court. I followed the South Korea challenger, knowing you had to beat Ito to get into Wimbledon main draw. <laughs> and then after you did, I didn't bother following because I'm like, okay, he's in. Then the next thing I know, you won the damn thing. Yeah. How huge was that for you, that you knew you had to accomplish something and to go do it and then finish it? Yeah, it was, it was a great, great week. It was a big, uh, big confidence boost again. And it was actually just the time where I was, uh, had split with, with uh, Woodford, uh, who, was, who I was working with for six months. So it was, I was very tired as well. Um, emotionally, I was drained. Uh, it wasn't, uh, uh, it wasn't the, the best of circumstances, you know, as, during that, that, that trip there in Korea where, 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 you know, it all happened and, and we parted ways. And, uh, but I gathered just enough, you know, focus and resilience and just kind of uh, kept going. And, and that ended up being a, a great week and, and one I'm very proud of because it was a lot of, you know, it was a lot of pressure. There was a lot on, on my mind as well and, and a lot going on off the court. And uh, you know, knowing I had to win that match was, was to make Wimbledon was definitely, um, yeah, a nice uh, little uh, roadblock that I had to overcome, and so I'm proud that I did. So finally, um, yeah, just you said that you wanted to go to the net more. You wanted to use that ability to net, make it more of an advantage. Have you been doing that this season? Are you happy with that, or is there room for improvement? Where where are you with all that? Yeah, there's there's room for improvement. I feel like a good part of the season I, I was I was doing that uh, and really working on that net game um, against you know it depends on your opponent. You know some some uh, some players like a target or are great at passing. Others are not not so much. So it's more about finding that balance. You know the game has changed so much from from uh, you know 20, 20 years ago when the courts were or thirty years ago when the courts were lightning fast and you could come into the net on off of anything you know these days you have to be a little bit smarter and construct your point a little bit more so it's still just finding that balance and finding uh, the you know the right way to describe my game style I think I'm still 27 still tr still figuring out you know how exactly I need to be playing because I feel like I have a lot of options which which is a good thing to have but but uh, it also might take a little bit more time to figure figure out how exactly you want to be playing on the court you know because I feel like uh, I can defend well, I, I can attack well, I can be a good baseliner or come into the net. I have a lot of options and um, especially now as I get fitter, you know, so it's, I still have some, some, some uh, figuring out to do with, with exactly what my game style is, but coming into the net is definitely one of those things I, I need to do, uh, do more and I'm working on that.